Hey everyone, it's Teddy, and today I wanted to talk about something that I was hearing about through a, I believe it was a Commander Headquarters video, but I'm not sure. And it was basically an argument revolving around Wrath of God effects, or Wrath effects, which, if you don't know, short term for effects that destroy all creatures on the board is a Wrath. And, you know, this is because of Wrath of God, which is a pretty generic one. Too neutral and too colored, white in this case, and destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Pretty good, right? No one's going to complain about a board wipe like that. Well, mostly no one. But uh, we were talking about board wipes, and the concept of farewell came up when, in this video, Commander Headquarters was talking about a situation. He was talking about the idea that uh, it, of the brackets and where cards should be. And he said farewell should be only a one or a two. And I was, <clears throat> I I was really shocked by that. I I didn't know what to say because maybe it's just maybe this is just me, but in my head. I kind of come to terms with the playing at a lower power level table. I have to say that. Hello everyone, I'm Teddy. I play at a pretty low power level table. All things considered, our decks are generally $100 or less. And there's a couple that kind of border on $150, but generally pre-cons and $150 at most decks. So, you know... When we see an effect like Wrath of God, we kind of accept that our board's gone unless we have a counter spell. That's how it works. All board wipes hit everyone. And when you look at it from that point of view, I'm sure you can understand why I believe uh, Farewell is good at a good at the three category. Because if all of your board wipes, this board wipe is just the uh, I don't know. For me, it's just so much more oppressive than any other board wipe. And I heard the leading argument that Commander Headquarters served for it being in the three was that it had a salt factor. Uh, which is that, I assume, because it has exile all graveyards. And I, I don't know. But you gotta understand, like, exiling is so much more powerful than destroying. And I, I guess I don't need to tell you, but that's kind of why I made this video. I just wanted to talk about what you guys think about, like, board wipes, what you think the best ones are. And I have three examples of board wipes that I guess I got, and they are all very well known. And, yeah, I just wanted to talk about it. So, we're going to start with Wrath of God. I mean, there's really not much to talk about. I guess we could talk about the cost. It only costs four. And it's destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. It's pretty solid. And it gets the job done. But there are a couple counters that we can think of off the top of our head to an effect like destroy all creatures, right? I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, that's what I could have done. I just realized I could have shown the counters. And I think I will. One of the counters is heroic intervention. Which... Permanence you get control, gain hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. Now, to be fair, the hexproof part isn't that important in this case, but it is still relevant in the sense that, uh, you know, it's an extra effect that your cards all have. So in case they try and do something to you in addition to that, it's, you know, it gets through that. It gets through single target, targeted removal. And I just think that the fact that a uh, normal ward wipe can be so easily blocked, especially by, you know, the example I gave, Heroic Intervention. Heroic Intervention is not the only one, and I'm kind of hoping they show more in this category. Of course, Dawn's Truce, another one that basically has the same effect. You just have to let your opponent draw a card, which, you know, it, it's a downside, but it's also, you know... Uh, I guess it's just a downside. It's just a complete downgrade. But, it, you know, it costs less, so you gotta give it that. Boros Charm, very similar effect. You can give your creatures indestructible. 
dodge board wipes like that. I was just making a deck for my brother that was uh, red, green, white. Naya, I believe, is that color scheme. And uh, we have both Boros Charm and Dawn's Trees. I guess you can kind of figure out what kind of deck we're running. And it doesn't look like there are that many more in here. I guess Flawless Maneuver gets the job done. Uh, which is not on the page right now. That's okay. Uh, moral of the story, there are quite a few effects that can get around this. These are just the ones that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. But there's also things like creatures that can get around and destruct. Or, sorry, that can... What am I thinking of? I guess make other creatures indestructible. The one I'm mainly thinking of, I think her name is Avison. She's an angel, and her thing is you can tap four angels and one white instead of paying her, like, seven mana cost. And she has the ability that every other cre uh, angel you control is indestructible, which is a great effect. I, I mean, these effects are very strong, and I think they could justifiably be thrown in the three tier so that tiers one and two on the bracket system, board wipes are... Uh, what's it called? They're, like, guaranteed destruction. And I, I think that would be very interesting. I actually, in my opinion, it'd be kind of nice if they bumped Heroic Intervention based on the list that my last video was about, which maybe I'll, you know, a card will pop up somewhere that shows you where to find it. It'd be nice if they could bump up Heroic Intervention another tier so that... Effects like Wrath of God are all-knowing. I, I don't know what the word is. Always effective in these lower two tiers. And then in tier three, you start getting things like that's when you start needing to use the Furies. Actually, maybe it's fine. Maybe tier one's just where board wipes wipe everyone's board. But regardless, we're talking about Farewell. Which is, in my opinion, the next step up in terms of board wipes. Because let's talk about Heroic Intervention again. Hexproof and indestructible. So the problem with indestructible is that only works if you're destroying a creature. Moving a creature from the battlefield to the graveyard. Because Farewell exiles a creature, or exiles actually all creatures, they skip the graveyard step, so indestructible doesn't have any effect, and in premise, they are removed from the game. I think this is super strong, and not only that, Farewell is modal. In the sense that you can choose a mode, and it has a lot of effects, pretty much deals with all of the most scary pieces on the board, and even not on the board, I guess the graveyard kinda is on the board, but it has a much wider reach. Of course you have to pay two more generic for it, but as we've talked about, generic mana is not a huge price to pay. You don't have to worry about pips or whatever, and it can... Uh, fit really well in any deck, in my opinion. I kind of wish that the price was a little lower, and maybe that just needs to be remedied by printing it more, but I think this card uh, would be really strong at lower level tables, and, well, I, I think it is really strong at lower level tables, but it's just an absolute menace at higher level tables. But I, I just found it so baffling that you would compare Wrath of God, which only destroys destroys creatures, to Farewell, which can exile any threat at the table, basically. Playing Enchantress, exile all enchantments. Playing against one, I guess. Playing against an artifact deck, exile all artifacts. And you can guarantee those artifacts aren't coming back through Graveyard, or, you know, through having Black as one of your colors in your deck. Having problems with creatures, just exile all of them fine. Not a big deal. And, you know, you can just exile all graveyards if you're not playing black, because why not? Why give enemies the chance to use their graveyards? I just think that Farewell is such a strong effect, and I just... I only think that there is one tier of cards that is above it, and I guess that's what I want to talk about next, which is Cyclonic Rift. Now... We all probably saw this coming, but this is a board wipe, or the equivalent of a board wipe. You're going to have to pay for all your cards again. In For 7 mana, in this case, 
to turn this text from return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand to return each non-land permanent, uh, permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. I find this effect so strong. And while I kind of glossed over this, we've talked about how heroic intervention works with Wrath of God and Farewell works with... Uh, farewell gets around heroic intervention but still has a counter in another card I should have pulled up, but we're gonna see if we can find it. Tefiri's Protection. So, Tefiri's Protection can get around pa uh, Farewell, which is normally a more... It, it's like a... I, I don't know how to say it. It's like an all-consuming deadly threat. And Tefiri's Protection is really, in my opinion, just too perfect of an answer. All of your permanents you control phase out. I mean, I guess the downside is that you can't interact with the rest of the board while you're phased out because you are treated as though you don't exist. So until your next turn, Tefiri's Protection just makes you... And there are other things. I think Perch Protection, if you know what that is. Uh, it just came out in Bloomborough. You give your opponent an extra turn and it gives you Tefiri's Protection effect in addition... Uh, a weaker Tefiri's protection, uh, protection effect, because I believe your life total still can change. I'm not sure, but I'd have to double check. It might just be Tefiri's protection, but you gift an extra turn. Moral of the story is that Bloomborough added a lot of cards that uh, were just weaker versions of some of the strongest cards in the format, like Heroic Intervention and Tefiri's Protection. But I still think it's really cool. I think I have a Dawn's Truce and a Perch Protection, which I'm super happy about. I love those cards. I at least have a Tefiri, or sorry, a Perch Protection from the Bumbleflower Precon. But we are just getting into the last kind of board wipe, which is a non -line uh I guess, I guess, what do people call it? They call it a... <laughs> I can't think of the name. Either way, it's a board wipe that isn't, I guess, linear in effect. It has a different application to each user or each person at the table which can be really strong and I think when most people hear of non-linear board wipes they think Cyclonic Rift they think Ruinous Ultimatum I think Garrick's there's some Garrick's one that costs seven mana too I think but or sorry it might even be nine eight or nine it's a lot of mana and it's black but Point is, Cyclonic Rift is just the best out of all of these. So, what do you do when a Cyclonic Rift appears? What are your countermeasures? I mean, pretty much only Tefiri's Protection, right? If you want to save your board and you're a target of Cyclonic Rift, Cyclonic Rift is just great because you as the player, like if I use Farewell and I don't want my board wiped out as well, I have to Tefiri's Protection, which is pretty brutal. But I, I guess it's an effective solution. I think if Tefiri, uh, I think Tefiri's Protection, if I remember correctly from the last video, was a tier three card. I think I could see Tefiri's Protection being bumped up to a tier four card just due to it being the perfect protection in the game. Uh, farewell. I I kind of like it in tier three because while in my table we don't have a lot of answers to let, well, you know, we actually have. Zero to Fury's protections. I think Farewell is like... In our tables, Wrath of God, our creatures are gone. If we cast a board wipe, we treat it as symmetrical. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Symmetrical all the time. Farewell just kind of guarantees that not only is it going to be symmetrical for creatures, but you're going to get some extra stuff on top. And Cyclonic Rift is an asymmetrical board wipe. It's really painful. And I'm glad only one of our friends has a Cyclonic Rift. Because, you know, if there's one card that just pushes you ahead of all of your opponents every time, I feel like Cyclonic Rift is just that game changer where, it, you know, we don't play with Tefiri's Protection. So it's kind of brutal. And look at the price tag on that thing. $40. I think it's around 35 realistically is where you're going to get it, but it, it's brutal. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. I just, I've been thinking about board wipes. I've been thinking about which ones are best, like 
non-symmetrical. By the way, I'd like to point out that while Cyclonic Rift is a very good board wipe, and it's pretty much the premier one because there are no prerequisites for it, there are cheaper non-asymmetrical board wipes, I should say. Uh, they might not be, like, $35, $40, but they're still pretty expensive. Like, y you might find one that's, like, I'm trying to think of one. There's one that has a something to do with, like, it doesn't remove, ca oh, what is it? If your creatures have counters on them, they're safe from the board wipe. And I know I was looking at that originally for my Miss Bumbleflower deck, but it still costs, like, $15. But if you're, like, trying to, if that's in your budget, I'm just saying there are cheaper alternatives to Cyclonic Rift. There's, if you're building dragons, there's one that wipes out all non-dragon creatures or all dragon creatures, but... You know, obviously you're going to choose all non-dragon creatures. There's an Ugin who can wipe out uh, one or more mana color creatures if you're going colorless. Yeah, just lots of cool stuff. But yeah, I'm glad we could have this talk. And I'd like to say, in terms of the bracket system, while uh, I think my views are, to be completely honest, are a little skewed to giving... A lot of the more powerful cards, a similar rating, and I have a hard time judging where a card like Cyclonic Rift would realistically be. Because I know when we were looking at the cards through the uh, the information that a Redditor gathered, we noticed that Rhystic Study, out of every card in the game, was in that tier. And realistically, I, I could see Cyclonic Rift fitting into tier 4. As well, it's a very salty card. There are very low expectations. Uh, there are very low requirements for putting it in your deck, and in addition, I could see Teferi's Protection. The quote, uh, the I'm trying to think of the words for it. The perfect protection in Tier Four as well. But I want to hear what you think. Uh, what would you think of all of this information? Would you think about board wipes? What's your favorite board wipe? Uh, if I were to say what my favorite one was, it'd probably be Austere Command, because it's just more versatile, and again, it's kind of got that asymmetrical property about it, but it's also a lot cheaper. So, again, I'm a cheapskate. I am looking into building a bunch of $20 Commander decks, probably five or six of them, so I can have a variety of ways to play. But either way, I hope you had fun watching, and... I mean it for real this time. That's all for this video. Bye-bye.